Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. It is 11.43 a.m. East Coast time, Friday, September 20th. Hopefully you're all having a fantastic end to your weeks, right? Beginning of your weekends. Week three of the NFL. I'm going to go through like we did for the first two weeks. This week, I'm going to be talking about running backs. I'm going to be ranking them a top 10, so to speak, in terms of my interests. And we're going to be doing it with the help of drafters.com. So I'm just going to be going right through. So right now, what you can see on here, and welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name is Sal Vetri. I do cover daily fantasy sports in the NFL, NBA, WNBA, and MLB streets. And what you're seeing here is right now my running backs um, stat sheet. You can get this stuff on Patreon. There's stuff linked down below in the description if you do want to check it out for Patreon, exclusive content, free strategy guides, all that. Um, But the thing I want to focus on is that this is filtered by running back salary for this week, right? And that's important for DraftKings. It's just the way that I'm filtering it, right? Of course, um, we're going to be using drafters.com because here's the thing that I like about, well, first of all, drafters, you guys, if you've been watching me, you know that I like the the, the format in general, but they have a, a free roll this week and it's uh, for a Saquon Barkley signed jersey. I mean, I'm a Penn Stater. I don't got my Penn State hat on for this video, um, but I want that jersey. So I'm going to be playing this. They have other free rolls as well where you can actually win money, right? They have a $1,000 free roll right here. Um, that thousand dollar free roll has a hundred dollars to first. It's free to enter. They have some other contests. They have quarterback rankums, running back rankums, uh, an eleven that eleven dollar buy and running back rank them a thousand dollars to first. So a couple other contests if you actually want to deposit money into the site. But for the purpose of this um, video, I'm just going to use this as sort of like a drafting board where I can put my top ranks. Right. So you see here you rank ten players. First place gets or their, your first ranked running back gets ten x the points and so on. So there's some game theory behind it in terms of getting to different running backs to try and be different than your competition. But when you're ranking 10 of them, I think we can get different just by having one player different in our rankings. So I'll be referencing this stat sheet to kind of look at where my interests lie. You can see in column F, my yes, no's, and my maybes is an X with a a yellow for this week at running back. Very small player pool for me at running back this week because I really just want to pay up. We'll see what the status of Marlon Mack is and his injury in the high 5K, low Um, that below 6k range. I think that that's a very interesting spot for Marlon Mack for sure. I love the spot leads the league in rushing right now, Uh, but let's get into it. Let's get into where I want to start with on these rankings. Um, And we'll come here. This is where I'll just kind of unreal them just so I remember for myself. Uh, We're going to start with Christian McCaffrey up top. Uh, So right now, I think just we'll get different right away. Uh, at least if you're playing in this type of format. And if you're not playing in this format and you don't want to take advantage of a free roll or you're going to free sign jersey of uh, the best running back probably all around in the league, um, or if you want to just free roll for $100, whatever it is, um, I'll be going through my analysis on why I like these players as well. So it's worth um, obviously tuning in for. So Christian McCaffrey this week. Yeah, he grades out as the highest score running back for me. He's playing in just such a good game. This game breaks all the records in my log and anything that I've ever seen in terms of what we should be projecting for the pace of this game. The Carolina Panthers are ranked number one in pace right now. That's not going to change because Cam Newton's not in the game. They want to play fast. They want to play up tempo. The uh, Arizona Cardinals are ranked number two in pace right now, and they're going to play fast all year. They lead the entire league by over 30%. Yes, they run no huddle so far in like 53% of their plays. The next closest is in like the 20s. It's nuts. Um, They run the most three and four wide receiver sets. They run the most plays overall. It's just so, so good for this spot for a guy like Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I don't care that Kyle Allen's going to be the starting quarterback. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter what the type of role Christian McCaffrey has. Last week was bad. Yeah, but Cam Newton's foot injury was apparently really bad, and it obviously affected that. You saw him overthrowing Christian McCaffrey. A lot of stalled drives from Cam Newton last week. Week one with an injured Cam Newton who did not look good, Christian McCaffrey still got his. I really like this spot overall, even if Kyle Allen's starting. It's not that hard to complete low A dot targets uh, and passes to your running back, especially when he's this skilled. And now you're getting Arizona in a high tempo pace. And dating back to week one of last year, including this week, Arizona is the fourth worst defense against the running back position. Uh, and last year, they were bottom three. So it's a really good spot overall for McCaffrey. He grades out as the, the highest projected player in my model. Uh, and if you want access to my model and projections, that is also on Patreon. Um, so next up for me, and I think I already know where I'm going with this one, but we can come back here. Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm actually going to go to Zeke. So we have not yet gotten to the poster boy, right? Um, of this probably video tag at the top, but also just a free Jersey giveaway for this contest. Yeah. Like Zeke, look, he's in a 21 and a half point favorite facing the Dolphins who have given up 195 rushing yards per game. That's, that's nuts. So far I get it. Two game sample, very small 195 rushing yards. Like what? 
um, per game, right? They lead the NFL right now with like almost 400 rushing yards given up through two weeks. Zeke Elliott, obviously a premier running back in this league who hasn't even gotten involved in the passing game yet. Only four targets through two weeks. He was averaging more than that per game last year, especially in, for the people that want to say, yeah, but Amari Cooper's there. Yeah, he averaged more targets per game when Amari was there last year. I get it. Now they have Randall Cobb in the slot, but Cobb's just taking over for that Cole Beasley, although an upgrade to Cole Beasley, in my opinion, can run more intermediate routes and better after the catch. There's still a lot to go around in the passing game. This offense looks dynamite. It's a home running back with a 21.5 point favorite. You could be damn sure Zeke's going to touch the ball probably 20 plus times in this game. And for the crowd that wants to go, Sal, Zeke's going to get pulled in the fourth quarter. Yeah, when they're up, like I said in the video for the uh, final thoughts video for week three, when the Cowboys are up 45 to three, I feel pretty confident that Zeke Elliott's probably got 25 plus fantasy points if they're going to pull him in the fourth quarter. He already did what he needed to do, so I'm fine with that. So I'm going to rank Zeke number two. He'll get 9x the amount of points for me. I already know who my number three is. Um, Number three is going to be the poster boy himself, Saquon Barkley. Honestly, these guys are all so close, right? They're all elite. They're all probably going to finish in the top five in points on most weeks that they're all on the slate because their roles are just ridiculous. They're going to touch the ball more times than not, 22 to 25 times, if not higher, like we saw Christian McCaffrey week one. The opportunities are going to be coming endlessly. They're great running backs. They deserve the money that they've been paid, such as Zeke, Saquon's uh, draft capital as the second overall pick and his money that he was guaranteed. All of it's deserved. These guys are fantastic. Uh, You can win the Saquon Barkley jersey, right, in this contest. So he's going to be third right now. Devin White seems to be trending as out. Uh, I do think that's impactful. Some people in the comments saying it's not that impactful. He's a starting linebacker, young kid, of course, but still looks sharp. Uh, and, and when you're losing somebody like that, whether it's just even even if you have good depth behind him, your depth now to your backup is going to be weaker. So overall, it's a good spot for Saquon Barkley uh, and even guys like Evan Ingram, but we're doing running backs right now. Saquon Droll is just insane. Daniel Jones, I think, is a bump. I think it's a very big increase from Eli Manning, who was overthrowing Saquon last week. Eli's just looked disgusting for the crowd that wants to say, oh, but Eli doesn't have any receivers. He's not even hitting his receivers. Like they've schemed it so that you can get their wide receivers open. He missed Benny Fowler. He missed Cody Lattimore the week before just on open passes that like I could probably be making those throws. Now, granted, I probably couldn't, but I'm just saying like Daniel Jones could be making those throws. Um, Saquon Droll's just nuts. He's second in the NFL right now, 38 yards behind Melvin Gordon on 12 less carries. It's nuts. The guy's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Looks fantastic so far this year. Nothing really changes from last year. Let's get into it now uh, in terms of my fourth interest. I believe, I think I remember what it is. Yes, Dalvin, the man himself, Cook. So we're going to go to Dalvin Cook here. It's just such a good spot. Huge favorite. The guy leads the league in rushing. He's the guy who leads it over Saquon by about 38, 39 yards, I think. Um, And yeah, he looks dynamite, right? He's a home run hitter. He looks fantastic in an offense that wants to run the ball in an offense that was trailing 21 to nothing last week against Green Bay. They lost 21 to six. They actually had a really good uh, defensive stand after that. Uh, for the rest of the game, but Dalvin Cook was still getting fed the entire game, even when you're trailing by three touchdowns and trailing the entire game. Uh, So it's good to see him still get the ball, but also in the receiving game, he picked up snaps. He's on the field for over 70% of the snaps now, and he had three targets in the receiving game last week in a week where Kirk Cousins still only threw in the low 30s. So if you ever get Kirk Cousins throwing 40 times in a game, there's a real chance Dalvin Cook can see six to seven targets in this offense. So yeah, it's really hard not to like Dalvin Cook as a huge home favorite here. I think he's a shoe in for right around 20 fantasy points. Um, and that puts him as a top four option in my book. Fifth option is going to be, and now keep in mind, we also have, it's not just a Sunday slate here. This is also going, or it's not just the, the main slate. This is also going to creep into Sunday night. So you have guys like Nick Chubb on this slate against the Rams. So keep that in mind as well. You also have on the opposite end of that Todd Gurley uh, against the, the Browns, right? In that game at night. So keep that in mind as we go through this on the rankings. Uh, it won't be that way for the main slate, but that'll be the way for this specific slate so uh not going to be useful yet but let's do this austin eckler austin eckler's touches are just increasing it's it's fantastic start of the year maybe in a t- split timeshare 60 40 with justin jackson after the last game he saw 75 percent of the snaps or so to justin jackson's 25 he had 23 touches which is the most that we've seen out of austin eckler in a game where melvin gordon didn't play right so now he's played five games where Melvin Gordon hasn't played. He got 17, 18, 18, 17 touches in every single one of those first four, 23 in the past one, had a second touchdown called back. The guy's just so effective and he's playing in an offense that the offensive line is shaky, a little bit better than expected, still shaky though. So you're going to get Austin Eckler right now coming in at 
Um, just like a floor of four receptions and like five targets because they're funneling it to Keenan Allen, 25 targets so far this year, and Austin Eckler. So six more targets caught all than last week. The guy's floor is just like in the receiving game. It's it's almost to that elite category of like six to seven fantasy points, four receptions for 20 to 30 yards at like a minimum out of Eckler, just based on the way that this offense wants to move the ball, quick, short passes. So I really like Austin Eckler this week. Uh, he would be ranked fifth out of all these guys. All right, so let's get Eckler out the way. Six might actually surprise some people because I'm going uh, a little bit deeper here, but Marlon Mack, and look, Marlon Mack right now, keep an eye on this, um, but Marlon Mack is dealing with an injury uh, and he didn't practice yet as of, I'm recording this right now at uh, almost noon on Friday, so I still don't see anything on Marlon Mack. I will probably get it later today, but he wasn't wearing his walking boot was one report. He was just holding it and he was laughing, being um, just kind of like nonchalant about it. So that bodes well, I would say, uh, but keep an eye on it, of course. Marlon Mack right now is leading the league in rushing attempts with 45. This offense wants to run the ball, and he's only facing a, an eight-man box on 6.7% of his carries. That's very good. Like, if you compare that to Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook is facing an eight-man box, eight men in the box. They're stacking the boxes, what that means, 29% of the time. Marlon Mack, only 67 So he's facing soft defenses overall. Now, that could be skewed based on the defense you're playing, but it's just showing that um, they're not that intimidated by Marlon Mack but he's still getting a ton of work. So you don't have as tough of a defense of eight guys in the box. It's only six or seven. And you're getting a ton of opportunity in terms of just pure rushing attempts. I like that. He's also running twice as many routes as his backup, Naeem Himes, who's supposed to be the pass catching back. But right now, Marlon Mack closer to 40 uh, routes run this year. Naeem Himes hasn't even broke 20. So Marlon Mack also has receiving game upside coming off a three target game. And then the matchup against Atlanta. Obviously, everybody knows they're terrible against running backs all of last year. They were bottom four, fourth worst in the league last year. Not the worst as many people think they were just due to the overwhelming media that came out and just in general that this Atlanta team has given up the most receptions to running backs per game over the last four years. Um, but in general, uh, Marlon Mack is a fantastic matchup. Just keep an eye on his health. I do like this spot for him quite a bit. Seventh, we're going to go Nick Chubb. Look, there was a little bit of concern for me that Nick Chubb was coming off the field in that last game on third downs. The Ernest Johnson, the guy who was in the backup for the Browns running back position in place of Dontrell Hilliard, uh, who was out, I believe, with a concussion. He was out with some sort of injury. Yeah, but Dearness Johnson was getting third down work. We saw him catch like the 27-yarder in the first quarter. We saw him have a decent amount of snaps. Now, Chubb still had, I think, 100 combined yards and a touchdown, and he gets a nice beneficial matchup against the Rams this week, right? No no, no more Ndamukong Sue up front. He's gone. He's shipped out, I think, to Tampa. So nice spot for Nick Chubb, who was active in the receiving game, but it is concerning. And he's going to be the red zone goal line back, but it is concerning to see Dearness Johnson take over. But Nick Chubb for my seventh spot is where I'm going to go. Um, with this one, we can take this out. This isn't going to say Nick Chubb because I did not factor in. This is pulling from my sheet, which is only for the main slate. Um, but I'm just kind of going one down from that now. Aaron Jones is going to be my number eight back this week. So you can see I'm leaving some names on the board. Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, Kamara. Um, Aaron Jones is in a really nice spot. So the talk of Matt LaFour saying, ah, we're going to go back and forth with our running backs, right? Uh, we're going to give it a 50-50 rep split. Well, if he's talking about snaps, that's already happening. Week one uh, was a 60-40 split. You saw 59% of the snaps to Aaron Jones against the Bears and then 41% to Jamal Williams. Aaron Jones outtouched him by like 3x. Last week we saw... 47% of the snaps to Jamal Williams, 58% to Aaron Jones. They actually overlapped. They were on the field together at some points. Aaron Jones was lined up as a receiver in the slot being motioned. It was a very nice to see the usage of Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones has 27 touches. Uh, Jamal Williams has 12, right? They both end up getting in the end zone. Aaron Jones on the ground had a career high 23 touches. On the ground, Jamal Williams had nine last week. So Williams is being active, um, but these are games, especially last week, where they were up 21 nothing. Now they're huge favorite once again. Uh, once again this weekend, uh, eight and a half point favorites against Denver. Denver right now through the first couple of weeks of the season has a top 10 rush defense in terms of overall PFF grades per pro football focus. But you can't beat the spot here for Aaron Jones. And then it's not even just a fact that like he got career high in touches last week on the ground because they went up 21 nothing. Like it was just a favorable game flow. But it's also the fact that we saw him being used as a wide receiver that actually perks my interest. And we saw him getting six targets last week. Like, that's fantastic. Overall, last week, Aaron Jones had 29 opportunities, meaning six targets, 23 carries, so 29 total opportunities, and 27 touches, four receptions, 23 touches on the ground. So Aaron Jones, somewhat of a difficult matchup, but I expect Aaron Jones moving forward with his receiving role to have about 16 to 18 touches as sort of a median projection. And then we saw what happens if they get in a positive game script, as Vegas is indicating this week. Positive game script for a running back means when your team's playing with the lead, because there's a better chance they try and milk the clock or at least run a little bit more um, and take their time. So Aaron Jones is my number eight running back for this week. Number nine is going to be 
David Johnson. So David Johnson's on the other end of this coin. We have Christian McCaffrey up top as number one, right? You have him right here because he's in this fast paced game. David Johnson will be on the other end of it. I love the fact that David Johnson. So look, first of all, he's healthy wrist injury. He came out a little bit last week with a scare came back in. Then Cliff, uh, Cliff Kingsbury said that uh, Kingsborough said that he's fine. So David Johnson is fine to go, right? He's totally fine. Plays at four o'clock in this fast paced game. I don't like the fact that this rushing offense in general, like they're going to throw the ball. The air rate is actually real out there. Kyler Murray's going to probably average 40 plus pass attempts a game or right around 40 a game. They're not going to run the ball all that much. The matchup against Carolina on the ground is actually a favorable one. So there's upside there for Johnson. But Johnson's been lining up, especially after week one, lined up 15 times in week one as a wide receiver, 16 times all of last year. Week two, he got injured. So it's very much skewed on how many times he lined up as a wide receiver and ran routes. But yeah, David Johnson should continue to line up as a wide receiver in the slot, should continue to stay on the field a ton. He's going to be the goal line back in an offense that projects out to have a ton of plays in general in this game and a decent overall employ- implied um, point total. So David Johnson right now, for me, grades out as a very good play. Their overall implied team total here is going to be 22.75, which is actually pretty beneficial given the amount of plays that are going to be in this game. You would expect a lot of stalled drives, but just the overall plays in the game will add to more drives in general. So I'm not too worried about that. David Johnson's my number nine. And then my number 10, my last guy that I'll rank, you can you can put two reserves in on this format. This is drafters again. You can check it out. It's linked down, down below. Um, but you can actually go in here and you can just go, uh, okay, so like say Aaron Jones gets hurt or I guess a, a 8-20 game. Nick Chubb is hurt, ruled out late. I'm not expecting it. He's not hurt right now. But just in case this happened, uh, one of your reserves, it would just bump everybody up. Like Aaron Jones would bump into the seventh spot and then your reserve, your first reserve would be bumped into the 10th spot. So it's just like an, a backup, right? In case something goes wrong, you don't have to take a zero. My 10th spot is going to be Alvin Kamara. Lots of concerns here, right? Um, The matchup against Seattle, not too concerning, especially for Kamara being like the number two receiver on this team. Uh, They have a full week now to get Teddy Bridgewater involved in the offense, a game script around him. But they're also saying it's going to be split right now between him and Taysom Hill. So they're going to get some deception in there, which makes sense. Like if you have these two quarterbacks, use them for the five or six weeks that you don't have Drew Brees and try and create as much deception as you can, because you know, these quarterbacks are not that highly talented, right? Um, I think Bridgewater is an okay backup. I think Taysom Hill is an okay backup. But when it comes to arm talent and winning a game down the stretch, um, especially against Russell Wilson this week in Seattle, yeah, you're going to have to create a lot of deception. So Kamara was very interesting to see him not used in the receiving game when they were down by multiple scores last week. I imagine that turns around this week. And their wide receivers are just thin. Keith Kirkwood went on IR. Um, Traquan Smith's dealing with an injury. It's really just Michael Thomas, for the most part right now, Michael Thomas, and like uh, Ted Ginn Jr. And I don't even know if Austin Carr is still there. There's no more Tommy Lee Lewis. They cut him a while ago. So their wide receiver depth is extremely thin right now, especially if Traquan misses this game. And then it's just Alvin Kamara. Like Alvin Kamara is still a wide receiver too on this team. I expect a lot of upside there, but just not as much upside because you're going to see a lot more stalled drives and not as fast tempo. So although you're going to have stalled drives in the Carolina and Arizona game, probably, um, there's going to be just so much more tempo that each team will still have like two or three extra possessions than usual. Whereas in the Saints game, you're not going to get that benefit. You're just going to have stalled drives. So Kamara is going to be my 10. There's a lot of skill there. I just don't like the overall spot uh, for him and his offense. I don't know if you see a ton of overall points. They came in as a 20 implied team total. One of the lower team totals we've seen for a Saints team in a while, obviously, because there's no Drew Brees. So that's where I'm at. So right now, my rankings are going to be Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Austin Eckler, 5, 6, Marlon Mack, 7, Nick Chubb on Sunday Night Football against the Rams. Should be a very entertaining game. Um, hopefully the Browns can win if you're an NFC fan. I'm a Packer fan, so anytime an NFC team loses to an AFC team, that's very good. Aaron Jones, number 8, as a big home favorite. David Johnson in that fast-paced game being used as a wide receiver a lot now, number 9. Alvin Kamara, number 10. Um, that's where I'm at. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this, this was beneficial. I'm going to be live on Sunday at 11 a.m. before lock, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe 1045, 1030. I'll be on up until noon. So you could ask me any of your final questions there. If you watched this whole video, if you thought it was enjoyable, if you thought my reasoning was pretty good, hit the subscribe button. We're like 500 or so subscribers away from, by the time I'm recording this, uh, 10,000. So that's a huge goal of mine. My goal was to hit it by the end of the year. It seems like we're going to get there within a week or so. So thank you all so much. This is the running back rankings video for the NFL week three DraftKings format. Uh, we use drafters.com. You can check it out. They have free rolls there with Saquon Barkley's jersey is the one that I'm about to enter here. Um, and then I'll just put, let's just put two reserves in quickly. I'll put Bell in as a reserve, very low total, but it, it's fine. And then Todd Gurley. Uh, and then I believe we can submit this team. So we'll join right there. Beautiful. We submitted that team. So I'm in no matter what. Um, so yeah, you can come in, you can sign that, you can join that, you can join the thousand dollar free roll. It's totally free to enter. Um, 
I think I've got like a couple bucks in here. What do I got? Like 10 bucks in here? Oh, it's free to enter. Yeah, so that's right. Um, so yeah, enter the same team. Then you can go over here. They have a quarterback rank them. The same exact thing for quarterbacks. Running backs, they have an $11 tournament. They have a $55, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And if you don't want to spend any money, they got some free rolls. So check it out. It's drafters.com. Um, some pretty cool contests here. And I really want to win the Saquon jersey. So appreciate it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. My name's Sal. You already know that. Peace out, gang. Hey, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. One second. Check out this page. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, all right? And if you're interested in Patreon, if you're not already a Patreon, you can hit that button on Patreon, become a Patreon. It will take you right there. You can also check me out on Twitter, at Salvetri DFS. And hey, if you're interested, this next video that's about to pop up, why don't you check it out as well? See ya.